Now I've got my forms set up on strong back right now. Uh, I haven't attached them to the strong back. I've screwed them in place, but uh, it, I've done this just so you can see basically what we're going to be doing. And before we do that, we have to uh, actually build our strong back, and that's what this video is going to. We need to realize that there's a lot of different ways to to make the strong back. Uh, the main component of the strong back is a, a solid piece of wood that runs the length of your boat, which we put our forms on. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, still, there's different ways we can do it. I build mine out of plywood, but I've seen them done with just uh, two by sixes or two by eights. And uh, I've also seen them done with uh, engineered uh, uh, floor joists. So, uh, you know, whatever you have available and however much money you want to spend, it's up to you. Where it starts to differ is the base of the strong back, okay? And uh, sometimes uh, people make it so that it's uh, not movable. Other times they build a strong back so that it is movable and they'll put uh, uh, caster wheels on it um, so that they can actually roll the, the canoe or the boat out of the way, you know, if it's a, a shared workspace. Uh, I would say the most important aspect of the base is that it's level, okay, so that from one end to the other it's level and from side to side. Uh, the other thing is the height. Um, when building a boat you don't want to have your, you know, your arms up like this when you're working on the top of the boat and I'll, I'll show you as an example. Um, this is a, another station form, okay, and this station here is number seven, which is the center uh, station of this particular boat that I have uh, resting on the strong back. And now if I just put this one in its place, you can see how much higher it is. Okay, so if I was to uh, build the boat at this height, when I get up to the top, my arms are going to be up high a lot. Okay, and it's just, uh, you know, it's not that ergonomic. It's not going to be comfortable, and uh, I've done it in the past, and you end up having sore shoulders. Okay, so, uh, it's, you know, it's something that you choose to do or not do, but what I'm going to recommend is that uh, you measure from the floor to midway up your body, okay, and uh, you take that measurement, and you plan that the top of your forms will be that high. Okay, so I'll just take this out of here again, and you can see this is an example. So that way when I'm working, I can look down on the forms, and my arms aren't uncomfortable, all right, and it's just an easier workspace. Okay, so how we do that is very simple. All we have to do is measure straight up from the ground to about midway of my body, and for me, it's about 44 or 46 inches, and uh, then we just subtract our highest station form. Okay, and in this case, my number seven form is 18 inches. All right, so we'll just say 44 subtract 18. Okay, and what's that? Uh, 26 inches, and then we know that our from the top of our strong back down needs to be 26 inches. All right, so if I'm going to make my uh, platform portion of the strong back uh, 10 inches, then the actual base needs to be 16 inches high. All right, so you can do those measurements to just make building more comfortable. Uh, you know, and the thing is, uh, you'll find plans for strong backs, uh, you know, on the internet or in books, and uh, they might not suit your body size. And since it's something that you're going to be working on for, you know, 120 hours, well, you know, you might as well take the time and uh, custom it to your body shape. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is just attaching the exterior carpet to the, the cradle section of the, the strong back base. Before I get to explain that part, I'll just go over what I've done so far with the base itself. Okay, so the base of the strong back is, uh, you know, just basically, a, you know, a set of legs or support. And I've chosen to use pressure-treated lumber so that once I've finished building 
the canoe, I can then take the, the base and use it for storage outside. You know, I'll just flip the canoe over and I can use this and I know that the pressure treated lumber is going to last a long time. Uh, I won't have to stain or paint it and, uh, you know, it'll be good for, for that purpose. So the base itself, I've, uh, like I've already gone over, I've measured for the height and uh, I've built that to suit me. The, the feet section, we call it here, is uh, I've gone out 16 inches right, in total and just centered them. Uh, you don't want to make these too long because uh, then it's just going to be something else underneath the, the boat as you're building that you can trip over. Um, you know, it shouldn't be that bad regardless because you know it will face this way. You know, and the strong back will sit up and run that way, and the forms will hang out. But still, the less you know clutter that you have underneath, the better. As well, once you start sweeping up sawdust and shavings, uh, it'll be a lot easier just to get in there and work around it. Okay, so another so, part of the, the strong back base is the cradle, which we'll end up using when we're finished uh, stripping the hull, and then we'll do our sanding and fairing, and we'll apply our fiberglass and epoxy. Then we'll flip over the hull, and we'll set it into the cradle to work on the inside. So you need to have a cradle system, and all I did was I used more pressure-treated lumber, uh, since I had it on hand, but, uh, you know, any type of lumber sheet stock that you have would work and again I just went to the same height about you know halfway up my body and uh, you know to get the length and I'm using an exterior carpet to uh, just make the cradle section itself and then I've just uh, cut some I guess they're about one inch cleats and I'm using two screws and I'm just fastening them uh, to the side like that.